The built-in JSON stringify function lets you convert a JavaScript object into a JSON string. What you might not know, though, is that JSON stringify can also create prettier strings that are much easier to read. Let's take a look at how you can do this. So first off, let's look at the standard behavior of JSON stringify. Here I have a JavaScript object that I'm declaring, and then we're just going to call json.stringify on that object. When I call this, you can see that we're getting back a JSON string. But you'll notice that all of the properties here have been uh, merged onto a single line, and all of these spaces have also been removed. If you're dealing with an especially large JavaScript object, this format is not very readable. It's perfectly valid JSON, but it's kind of hard to read and understand what's going on. It'd be much nicer if we had some white spaces and new lines in there, which would make things more easy to read, like our original JavaScript object. Thankfully, JSON stringify takes additional arguments that let you specify if spaces and new lines should be added. So we'll just go in here, and let's call json.stringify again and we're going to call it on our object. And now for the third value, so we're going to pass in null as the second value here. For the third value, we're going to pass in the number of spaces that we want to be added for each property. So here, let's pass in two, which is going to add two spaces for each property. Now when we run this, you can see we get back a string that contains new lines. Now this is a little bit hard to read, so instead I'm going to feed this through console.log. So I'll say console.log on the result here. And now we'll get back a string in the console here. That is the same string just being displayed in the console with all the new lines actually rendering properly. You can see that we have a much more readable version of that string. So here, this looks much more similar to our original JavaScript object. We have a new line for each property, and then everything is being indented by two. So each property here has two spaces in front of it. Once we get into a, an array here or into a property inside of a, another object, that is going to be indented by four spaces. So for each indentation level, it's going to add two spaces. Now, of course, we could go back here and change the indentation level. So if we wanted more spaces, we could go and bump this to four. This would mean that every uh, entry inside the JSON is going to be indented by four spaces. When I run this, notice how there's more spaces being added. So four spaces here, four spaces here, eight spaces for all of these. These JSON strings with these spaces and new lines have the exact same meaning as the original JSON string. So the one up here that was all compressed onto a single line, they're just a lot more readable. In general, if you're just passing around JSON, you want to use the version that does not contain the spaces and new lines because that's going to save space and make your string shorter. But if you're needing to display the JSON and if you're debugging things, for example, you can use JSON stringify with that additional third argument, which is going to print a much more readable version of that JSON string. So that's how the arguments to JSON stringify let you pretty print the resulting JSON.